Welcome to the next in our series of lectures for principles of microeconomics here at Rutgers. And in this lecture, what I'm going to take a look at is the welfare implications of going from a closed economy to an open economy to an open economy with taxation. And what I hope to do is to illustrate uh, the changes in societal welfare as these different changes occur in the economy. So make sure you understand when I talk about a closed economy what I exactly mean. A closed economy, no foreign trade or finance. We're not exchanging goods with another country. We're not borrowing money, nor are we lending money. So we are a completely self-sufficient economy. Everything that's produced is consumed domestically, and all savings is used domestically. All right, so that means the domestic supply and demand determine domestic price. So graphically, that's what I've done here. We've got a domestic demand curve, domestic supply curve, where they intersect one another is the equilibrium. And the way these graphs are drawn, it's 50 bucks a barrel uh, for the price, and 5 million barrels per day are brought into the uh, are produced in this country on our, and are consumed in this country. So we don't have any, uh, any supply or demand uh, coming in from the international markets. The only thing we're taking a look at is uh, domestically. Well, the welfare can be measured for this, for this economy. If we just calculate consumer surplus and producer surplus, we can get our total surplus. We can know what the total surplus that's generated by this transaction, these transactions in the marketplace. And this can be calculated because both of these are triangles. So if you use the formula one half base times the height, uh, you can calculate these numbers. So for example, if I calculate consumer surplus, the base is equal to 5 million barrels, and the height is equal to 50. It's 100 minus 50. And we take one half of that, and we end up with a consumer surplus of 125 million. Now, the way I've drawn these supply and demand curves, uh, this is completely symmetrical. So, when I calculate a consumer surplus, producer surplus is going to be equal to one another. Uh, that's not always going to be the case. It's just the way I uh, put this example together. So, we have consumer surplus of 125 million, producer surplus of 125 million. You add those together, total surplus is 250 million. Let's say this market goes from being a closed economy to an open economy. And an open economy means that there is international trade and international finance. Goods are flowing across uh, this country's boundaries, and funds are flowing in in the form of loans, etc. And the assumption that we're going to make is the price is lower in the world market than the domestic marketplace, because if the world price were higher than this, nobody would import the good anyway. Why would you try to sell uh, oil that it is costing you $75 per barrel to produce in a country where they're buying it for 50 No sense in doing that. So we're going to assume that the price is lower in the world marketplace, and therefore Im oil importation is going to occur. And the assumption that we're going to make is that the price in the world market is $30 per barrel. What are the implications of this? Number one is that we can determine the level of imports because if we just go from the price line completely across the first thing we hit is the domestic supply curve, uh, supply curve. and that tells us that at that price that new price of uh, thirty dollars per barrel domestically three million barrels of oil per day will be produced if we follow that price line all the way across to demand that tells us how much will be domestically demanded which will be seven million dollar seven million barrels uh, of oil per day. So they want to buy 7 million barrels and domestic producers only want to supply 3 million barrels. So there's a shortage in this marketplace of 4 million barrels and that shortage is going to be made up by the imports coming into the country. So realize that by the institution, or not the institution of this, but by the opening of this uh, marketplace and allowing uh, cheaper imports to come in uh, 
we can see the impact on domestic producers they're producing less but we also get to see the benefit that domestic consumers get they get to buy cheaper goods and more of them so if we take a look if i go back to the other graph take a look at the area of consumer surplus and producer surplus before i open up the economy and take a look at it now that i've opened up the economy you can see that previously the consumer surplus and producer surplus were equal to one another and clearly by looking at this graph that's not the case see we have that consumer surplus has grown and it looks as though producer surplus has shrunk and this makes sense why would it make sense that consumers are better off well remember consumer surplus used to be the area above price and below demand well if you lower the price you by default are going to increase the level of consumer surplus because that lower price is going to be directly translated into additional consumer surplus so they're better off because of the lower price from fifty dollars to thirty dollars per barrel they're also better off because now they're per they are able to consume more goods in the closed economy they could only consume f five million barrels uh... of oil per day and now with the economy opened up now they can consume seven million barrels per day so they're better off because of the fact that that's two million barrels per day that they get to consume and that's going to generate consumer surplus if we take a look at the producers you can see that they're worse off because of the same exact reasons or the exact opposite they're made worse off by the lower price they used to get fifty dollars per barrel and now they're only getting thirty so they're worse off because now they are getting a lower price but they're also made worse off because they're producing less they used to produce five million barrels per day and now they only produce three million barrels per day so they're made worse off by the lower price and the fact that now they have lower production all right so we could take a look at that and we can come up with some actual numbers all right so I have the consumer surplus in a closed economy and the producer surplus and total surplus let's compare that to when we opened up the economy we could see that consumer surplus when the economy was closed it was 125 million now it's increased to 245 million 120 per 120 dollar uh, million dollar increase so as we said before looking at it graphically we showed that consumer surplus increased and by actually pulling, putting the numbers together we see that that is exactly true let's take a look we said producers were made worse off so here's the producer surplus with the closed economy Here's the new producer surplus, a decrease of 80 million. So graphically, we showed that producers were made worse off, and numerically, we, we've also shown it. But what have we done in total to society? Total surplus in the closed economy was 250 million. Once we opened it up, total surplus increased to 290 million. So by going from a closed economy to an open economy, total surplus is increased. We have a net increase in $40 million of, of total surplus. So, to, so total surplus has increased by this opening up of the economy. The thing you should be aware of, there is a distributional effect. Consumers were made better off. They saw their consumer surplus increase, while producers saw their producer surplus decline. So a, a, par a portion of what's going on is you're tra transferring welfare, in this instance, from producers to consumers. So let's say the domestic producers aren't particularly thrilled with this notion. Uh, they've seen their output decrease from 5 million barrels to a day to 3 million barrels per day, and they've had to lay people off, and the unemployment rate in the state is high. Uh, also, people are upset. We're importing 4 million barrels of oil per day. We shouldn't be reliant on foreign energy sources. We need to be more energy independent. In order to make ourselves more energy independent, if we institute a tax on imports, that is a way to limit imports. And I will tell you exactly right now, it will. If you institute a tax on imports, it will decrease the level of imports. Uh, but let's take a look at what's the total impact of that tax and who benefits and who is made worse off by that tax. So let's assume that this is the 
price in the world, but let's just say the tariff's not on there. I will move the price line up, and the vertical distance is the uh, price of the world plus the tariff. If I move price upward, because I'm instituting a tax, so here's the original price. If I institute a tax of $10 per barrel, that new price in the world becomes $40 per barrel. Okay? You take the world price, you add the tariff, and that is the new price that we're going to see in the domestic marketplace because that's what's occurring. When that world oil comes into the United States, they've got to pay $10 to the federal government. All right? So if we take a look and go back to the original point, we can see the areas of consumer surplus and producer surplus. As the price goes up, if it's a dollar per barrel, two, three, four, five, etc., going all the way up to 10, you can see that consumer surplus is shrinking and producer surplus is increasing. As the price goes up, producer surplus increases and consumer surplus decreases. All right. So you can see that producers are being made better off by the tariff. Why are they made better off by the tariff? Because the price that they get to sell their product goes up from $30 per barrel to $40 per barrel. And as the price goes up, the quantity that they're supplying is going to be increasing. So they, the industry itself benefits because they're going to get higher prices and higher output. It means the unemployment rate's going to go down in the region. They're going to be able to hire more people. Okay? So realize that, that the institution of the tariff will decrease the level of imports. If I raise the price up to $4 per barrel, and if I could get this thing to move up just a little bit so it looks a little better. That looks a little better. All right? So that tax makes it better off for, produ uh, for producers. Producer surplus increases, consumer surplus decreases. So we can actually calculate that out to see what the changes to consumer surplus and producer surplus are. And I've compared that across the, the board for a closed economy and open economy, and the open economy when we've added a tariff on there. So originally in the closed economy, total surplus generated by the oil markets was $250 million, evenly split between consumer surplus and producer surplus. When we opened up the economy, and allowed cheaper oil, le less expensive oil, to be imported into the country, we saw the total surplus increased to $290 million. But we also noticed there was a redistributional effect. Consumers were made better off. They saw consumer surplus increase, but producers were made worse off by opening up the economy. Then we see that if people decide that it, we need to decrease the level of imports, that we're too dependent upon foreign imports, and that if we institute a tariff, the tariff will successfully decrease the level of imports coming into the country. But the net impact of that is it actually decreases total surplus. Total surplus is $260 million and the institution of that tariff decreases consumer surplus. Why? Because they pay higher prices and they get to buy less of that product. This translates into it being better off for the producers. Producers are better off because of the higher price and the fact that they're able to sell more output. So we have a total surplus of 260 million. If we add on to the fact that we can account for another 20 million in government tax revenues, with the institution of the tariff of $10, imports fell to a level of 2 million barrels per day, which means that the government is generating $20 million in revenue. If we want to talk about deadweight loss, if we take a look at the total surplus that we can account for, and the government tax revenue, we account for that also, we could see that that's equal to $280 million. $10 million we can't account for from our transition from the open economy to the open economy with a tariff. That is what economists mean by deadweight loss. There's $10 million worth of total surplus that used to exist that I cannot account for in total surplus that's being generated plus any government revenue that's generated by the institution of the tax. So here is an example of what economists mean by deadweight loss. I could account for this 
This is now all I can account for. That $10 million worth of surplus disappeared. I hope that this was helpful to you. I think it's important to be able to understand these concepts. Number one, the difference between an open market and a closed market is important. Also, uh, what I mean by a tariff on an import and also, what are the welfare I impacts? If you, if you transition from a closed economy to an open economy, and then an open economy with some level of taxation occurring, what are the impacts on societal welfare across those different spectrums of uh, international competition? Uh, so if it didn't help you, make sure you can feel free to stop by my office hours. As always, they are on uh, Mondays between the hours of 4 and 6. Uh, if that's not convenient for you, make sure you contact me and I will make arrangements for uh, additional office hours.